Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today we are looking at the first step of the mixing process, which is the static mix. This is where you're getting your entire mix laid out with just volume and panning. No plugins, no processing, just volume and panning. This is crucial because if you don't get your volumes right, your mix is never going to be right. But before we get into today's video, just a quick reminder, this is another video in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner Guide series where we're walking through everything from the first time you open up GarageBand to you export out your finished mix and mastered song. In fact, we've actually been recording a song together that we're just now today starting to mix, and in a couple days we're going to master as well. So you get to see the entire process throughout the series. So if you haven't seen the other videos, definitely go back and check those out and stick around for what's coming up next as well. And before we get into it, I also want to give you the ultimate GarageBand guide. This is a completely free guide that walks through recording, mixing, mastering, shortcuts, gear recommendations, really everything you need to know. It goes through all the steps of the mixing process. You can quickly reference back to it anytime you're working on your music and it's completely free from the link in the description below so be sure to pick it up but let's go ahead and get into the static mix now if you've been following along with this series there's a couple little things that have changed since we we're working on it together and recording it the first is that uh with the drums i have switched the direction mixer here so i flipped it if you just open up the direction mixer plugin and go to imaging, you can pull this up and you can move the direction to 180 and that's gonna flip the sound of the drum kit. Without this on, you hear a cymbal off on this ear and then when I flip this on, it's over in this ear, right? So that's just flipping it. I prefer this perspective of the drum kit. It's like you're sitting where the drummer is as opposed to watching from the audience view. It's a more standard approach to a drum sound. So we're gonna leave that there. I've done that on both of these drum kits. It's just the first plug in there. I set it to negative 180. The second thing is that we ended up actually re-recording the lead vocal tracks. I just felt like they could have more energy and just be a slightly stronger take. And so we did a few takes, we comped it together and we just made sure that we were really, really tight to our doubles. So if you watch my video on recording vocals, where I say get your lead vocal and then try to get your doubles as close to your lead vocals as you can, we just had to kind of reverse engineer that since we were happy with the doubles, but we wanted the lead vocal to just have a little bit more energy. So we just made sure that their timing and takes were as close to it as we could. And then we comped that together and this is our new lead vocal track. So you'll hear that in just a second. And then the last thing I did is I also ended up taking the acoustic guitar from the scratch track for just the intro and the outro. Uh, it was just straight strums on the acoustic. It was different than what I played when I recorded. And I liked it in those two sections. I figured I'd leave it in. Uh, and there's no vocals on that scratch track in those sections. And it was good timing and a fine take. And it had a kind of cool sound too. So other than that, the only other thing that I did was if you hit right click on here or hold control and click on a track header, you can assign track color and I color coded my session. So here I can change this to anything I want. I like to do this so I can move around in my session really fast. I can see exactly, okay, these red tracks are the drums. These are my percussion tracks. This is my bass track. Here are my guitars. I love to just color code. It makes it much, much easier and faster for me to move around in GarageBand. Uh, newer versions of GarageBand have this. If you're working on a really old one, you might not have it, but they've had it for a couple of years now. Okay. Other than that, let's go ahead and get into the static mix. And first we have to set up for it. You can't just jump straight into this. The first thing you need to do is take off any sort of processing that's not part of the sound. So if it's not adding to the sound, if you didn't intentionally dial it in to be part of the sound, more that you were either trying to mix or as a preset that GarageBand just slapped on there and you don't necessarily think it's helping, then I would go and take it off. If you like the way that sounds and you're fine with it, then I would leave it on. But for example, they put a compressor in this drum kit. This isn't the way that I'm probably gonna approach the compression. So I'm gonna go and take it off and I'm gonna dial in compression on my own. And on the grit track, all of these are fine. I will mention like there is an EQ here, but there's nothing set on it. And on this grit track, there's an EQ, but I was just using this to cut out low end before the distortion so that there wasn't a bunch of distortion on the low end of my track. I wanted that to be nice and clean. So just cutting it out with an EQ. So I'm gonna leave that on because it is part of the sound in my mind there. And then on the bass, like the bass amp, I do wanna leave that on. I wanna have that on there. On the guitar tracks, I obviously wanna leave my guitar amps on here. Uh, again, this EQ isn't actually doing anything, so we'll leave that on there. I am going to take off my MV Meter 2 on there because there's just no reason for it, and it's taking up computer processing power. So we'll go and pop those off on tracks that have it. These compressors aren't actually set, so they're not doing anything. OK. 
Okay, we're all good. The rest of these are all just the default settings without any actual settings on them. Okay, so that is the first thing you need to do is clear out all of your processing that's not part of the sound. The second thing you need to do, and I know that this is scary, but we'll do it together, is take all of your volumes down to zero. So we're gonna take each one of these volume faders down to zero, and we're also gonna put pan positions back up to the center. We'll plan those out intentionally as we're going through this process. If you hold option on the keyboard and click on a pan position, it will put it back up to center. With the volume faders, you do just have to pull each one down. Okay, I'm gonna go and fast forward through, but you can watch me do it here. All right, and then the very last thing we need to do to get set up is open up our master track. And I'm gonna get rid of all these plugins that are on here too. And we are going to put on in the very last position, the MV Meter 2 plugin. If you haven't already downloaded, I'll link to it below here. And we need to set this, if you just click where it says VU, change it to peak so that it's reading the peak level, the absolute zero. VU is a different reading altogether. So you don't want to MVU, you want to make sure this is on peak. And then if you click right here, we'll fold it in half and we're just going to put it up here. And now we can start mixing into this. And remember what you're looking for here is that this max in the bottom right corner never hits past negative three at the absolute loudest. That's keeping safe, clean and clear headroom from the top of our mix so it's not getting into digital distortion, which happens when you get to zero. Okay, so now we're just gonna loop the loudest section of our song, which for us is this chorus here. And I like to start with my drums. All right, let's go and bring in the lead vocal. If you click on it, it will reset it. So we're already hitting negative three and we only have two elements in. So we're gonna go and bring these volumes down just a little bit. And let's Every listen to that again. track okay again we're at negative 3.4 we're starting to get close here so i'm going to go and take each one down by specifically one decibel so negative 3.8 for this one do negative 21 here negative 9 or 11 here and this vocal, I think the vocals are gonna be okay. I think it needed to come up a little bit anyway. Let's listen. Try to bring that bass up a little bit here. Do this guitar here. Okay, so notice that we've now hit negative 2.6. So you can now that there's a bunch of stuff in, instead of going and trying to turn each individual track down, we're just going to go down to utility here and hit gain. And so now I've added a gain plugin as the top plugin on my master track. And now I can turn down the entire mix right here. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this down negative two to be safe and pull the MV meter two back up. Check this. The acoustics are a little bit too loud. Some more vocals. Halfway. Cool. 
und so ist es schön. And solo. I want to get these relative vocals, vocal Every levels right. Day we keep racing through space, but I'm still stuck in place. So stuck in place. 50% pain on these last two here. Every day the universe expands, but I'm still stranded here, dressed in my fears. If you check on this meter up here when it's soloed, the top level is your left volume, the bottom is your right volume, so you can make sure it's even on the left and the right. Looks like the right could come up just a little bit. Cool. Let's listen to the context. Sometimes when it restarts, for some reason, it will peak louder than it actually is. Let's look at this again here. So we're at negative 1.5 now. Let's go and turn it down to negative 3 on the gain, and that will put us back in a safe range. Actually, it would be 3.5. Negative 3.5. That'll put us back in a safe range. So we still went a little bit over there, so we're going to go and turn this down, negative four. Every day the universe expands, but I'm still standing here, in my face. All right, let's go ahead and listen through a little more of the song, starting with this intro, make sure we get all the parts here. Looks like we're still just a little bit too loud, so we're going to bring it down negative 4.4, and that's going to be it. That is how you set your static mix, right? Now, I know that you just watched me go through it. There's no better way than to do it than to just do it and do it a handful of times and get comfortable with it. I promise you, if you take your time to get your static mix right, you're going to have a better final mix. There's basically no way around it. If your volumes are set right, the final mix is going to sound better. So take your time and get this right. Don't stress too much about that peak level. Just keep your eye on it. And if you need to turn it down with a gain plugin, that's no problem, right? But just keep your eye on it as you're bringing things up. And as long as you're on top of it, you'll have no problem. Okay, before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate Garage Band Guide from the link in the description below. It's really going to help you out. And as always, I'd love to hear from you. Have you been doing the static mix when you go through the mixing process? Not setting your volumes, but actually going all the way down to zero and then setting them? Them, let me know in the comments below. It, if not, let me know if you're going to start doing it on your next mix. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. One thing at a time.